person. You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, Marcy is officially a grandmother, and the cat in her bathroom is adding a new layer to the diapering experience. And I'm back from my Mexican vacation, and very, very grateful for my household plumbing. Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome back from grandparent leave. Uh, are you kidding me? He's only been here for a day. And? So it's like, we're still like, this is the house of chaos. Usually it is the house of chaos. Let me rephrase that. This is the house of quadruple zillion billion million chaos things going on at once. How's that? Well, why, why don't you just do a quick recap? Of the maternity, okay. the grand maternity leave. Baby Kale arrived last Thursday. You just called him Kale, like the vegetable. Okay, or Kane. <laughs> At least they took the Y off the end of his name, so it doesn't look like Kanye anymore. Uh, it's K-A-Y-N. So, baby Kane. Baby finally came into this world on Thursday. He He was pretty fast. It was like one push, boom. Wow. Which should be a song, actually. I like that. One push, boom. One push, boom. He came flying out. Um, He had a lot of fluid in him that didn't need to be there. And he wasn't breathing, so he went straight up to the... They don't call the NICU the NICU anymore. No? It's called the special care unit. Oh, for goodness sakes. I know. (laughs) I know. Everything is special now. This it's yep. like the Prairie Home Companion. You know, all our well, children. They didn't give him a trophy, so good. He still doesn't breathe quite right, but he can drink. So they let him come home yesterday with so much equipment. Oh my goodness! And he he can't leave if he wants to. If he wants to escape, he can't. He's got a. Uh, he's hooked up to monitors. He's got oxygen up his nose. All this stuff, but he's very cute and sweet. So while all of this is happening, okay, and the kids were staying downtown, Eve's favorite cat, Tesla, our longtime listeners will know who Tesla is. She's the kitten who had to have her eyeballs removed and then last year disappeared for a month in the forest and came out of it just fine, except that she pooped on pillows. So she became a shop cat. And shop cat Tesla stopped walking. I mean, all of a sudden she couldn't stand up. Her legs collapsed. So Tesla is in my bathroom now, which has turned into the cat hospice, I guess. For a change. I, I see you like. You know, it's kind of, your eyes. it's become a metaphor now. When, when a pet <laughs> is going close to the finish line, you can just say, it's living in my bathroom now. And we'll all know what that means. That means your time is running out. In fact, if I come down with a life-ending disease, I, they don't I'll need to- i put you s- in my bathroom. Yeah, just put me in the bathroom or say that you have. Like, where, where's Tori? Uh, she's living in my bathroom, in bathroom now. Yep. Kind of like going to the farm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, sent, we sent your dog to the farm. And we sent your mother to Marcy's bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So Tesla's in my bathroom, and we have this little wheelchair where, that somebody loaned us. But how do you put a cat in a wheelchair? I put a Especially dog. Especially a blind one. I put a dog in a wheelchair. and, and that, But dogs are different. Yeah, this dogs... cat thinks that someone's chasing her. Oh. And it's freaking her out. Oh. Yeah. She's using a litter box, even. Because I got this special litter that they sniff and... It's supposed to attract them. It sounds horrible. But, it sounds like your whole bathroom reeks of cat litter. That sounds just well, no. god awful. Cat we, litter itself has no smell. Right, but now it's, you've got a stinking one. So they can no, find I it. I go in no, there every hour and clean it. Every hour? Every hour. Yeah, because you got nothing better to do. So various combinations of you spent time sleeping in the hospital, which I hear was not exactly comfortable. Yep, that's pretty much it. And nothing's changed. I was seriously surprised at how much has not changed since my youngest was born 28 years ago. What What did you look around and go, oh, yeah, I was, I did that. What were the things? Well, they're still sticking their whole arm up your to see where the baby's head is. 
I mean, you would think they would have invented some kind of little camera or something. So like I don't want them sticking a camera up there. No, what kind of weird? I'd want a little tiny camera rather than somebody's big old hand. Ow! At at that point, a whole baby's head is coming out. The hand is small. Although, although one of my girlfriends did dismiss a nurse from the labor and delivery room for having long, fancy manicured nails for exactly that reason. Yes. Who lets a nurse have long nails? She she wasn't supposed to. I, I always see these women on TV, especially the rappers, that have, like, these six-inch nails, and I wonder how do they change diapers and uh, I think wipe I think it's a signifier. The signifier is that I am now so successful that someone else can change my kids' diapers, and I own a bidet. There you go. <laughs> but so, yes, I have, a, I have a cat in the bathroom and a baby in the fifth wheel. That's my life right now. So, so the bathroom conversation. I I need to have this bathroom conversation with you also yes. because while you were dealing with becoming a grandmother for the first time, I was on vacation, and part of the well, I worked, and then part of the vacation was in Mexico. Uh oh! Did and, you no, drink the water? No, no, no. And wind it, up in the bathroom. No, no. It wasn't that. It was. It was bathroom configurations that plagued me my entire trip. My entire trip. I visited France. I, they have a beautiful home. It has beautiful bathrooms. It's in a beautiful place. And, I mean, just gorgeous desert, exquisite scenery. If you like deserts, fabulous wildlife and cacti and succulents and the smell of herbs in the evening. And you're not allowed to flush your toilet paper. And that just smoked my buns. That just really, I'm like, I'm not moving any place that I can't flush the toilet paper. (laughs) And then, then I go to Mexico City. I I have a running list of things that I could potentially divorce my spouse over. Theoretically, he speaks Spanish. And there's some sticker on the mirror and he comes to me and he says, well, I know we're in a big city with big city plumbing here. And by the way, Mexico City is a very sophisticated place and it has beautiful art and it has fantastic restaurants and it has exquisite parks. And other than the fact that the sidewalks, which are never repaired and have strange two foot drops in the middle of them for no good reason and sometimes have those gratings disappear and then they just stick a piece of cardboard over the top, which I don't know if it's better to just have a big gaping <laughs> hole or be, I don't know, but in the dark, I just sort of hung on to the spousal unit the whole time. But circling back to, to the big city sophistication, the spousal unit informs me that there's a sticker on the mirror that says, once again, don't flush your toilet paper. And now I lose my mind. I'm like, what are we paying all this money for this <laughs> fancy place in this fancy city? And I have to sit down and to make matters worse, who does this? Who has a fancy Airbnb with the wrong size toilet seat on it? Who does that? And of course, it's only the wrong size if it's too small, right? So if you sit on this toilet seat, you're basically just sitting on the cold, freezing cold. And if you have a guy with you peed on, rim of the toilet. So no part of the bathroom experience is acceptable to me in any way. And I basically start using the bathroom nude and and, and dealing with the toilet and then just leaping in the shower every time. I just was going out of my mind. And after day three, it took three days, and he summoned up the courage to say to me, um... Turi, I have an apology to make. I, it's I, not what it said. Oh, that's right. The sticker <laughs> did not say that you could not flush your toilet paper. The sticker said that you're not supposed to use the white towels to take your makeup off. <laughs> well, I have a suggestion for next time you go out of the country. Oh, I had some suggestions. Pack a funnel. <laughs> you could have just stuck the funnel there and he'd stand it up. You know, it, it, I, I've never been as happy to come home and go to the bathroom as I was after this trip. Well, at least you weren't locked in a stall for an hour like I was in, in Mexico. Mexico. That's true. You you had a bad experience. No, I had I had no trouble there, but I don't understand 
Google Translate, why didn't it occur? To, why did I just assume he knew what he was talking about? Here in the States, speaking English, I never assume he knows what he's talking about. Why would I assume he knows what he's talking about in a foreign country in a foreign language? What's wrong with me? See, I would just make stuff up. I'm really good at that. Well, I would totally make you, it up. And you would not. Frankie, you would I not. Would. You would not would. make that up. No, you would not I, say. I would, I would say, like, it says boys have to pee sitting down. <laughs> and I would just tell him that. Because <laughs> I'm really mean like that sometimes. Well, I have to take it out somewhere. Well, if he had planned to be really mean like that, this is exactly what he would have done. <laughs> That is hilarious, though. I'm crying. On the third day. Oh, I I'm sorry. I to laugh at. I have to tell you, I misread. <laughs> so then we spent another half a day flushing toilet paper. <laughs> just for the heck of it. No, the stuff that was in the garbage. <laughs> Did you have rubber gloves? You just spilled it a little at a time with the seat up. Not that it mattered because the seat was such the wrong size that it just was kind of useless anyway. But I, I spent seat. way too much time in my vacation thinking about bathrooms. That's what I can tell you. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I know now the four I'll star. I'll places with you, though. The, yeah, you're going to be changing diapers <laughs> way longer than I had to deal with <laughs> ill-fitting toilet seats and not flushable paper. Cats in your bathroom. What? Ants? What? And cats, in, cats in your oh, bathroom. Oh, that's right. You have to be careful in the night not to stomp the blind cat when you have to go in and pee. Actually, my husband hooked up a little motion light that when I walk in the bathroom at night, the motion light goes on. I don't think because I would want. Because the cat's blind anyway. Right, but that I would be blind after that. I don't want to wake up with a light shining in my face. It's and... just like it's one little tiny colored light bulb. So after all of this. Yes. <laughs> you, you're, you're home. The grandbaby is living next door with its yep. parents. Yep. Reasonably healthy. You're back yep. to having a failing animal in your bathroom. Yeah. How, how how much, by the way, did, I almost hate to ask this. How much did you spend on the failing animal at the vet? I'm curious. I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I have to ask that failing because animals. I've, I've done the same thing myself. But let's let's hear it. It's got a K in it. Oh, no, man. It's a number followed with a K. Oh, no, no, no. But I mean, this is like not just your ordinary cat. And she's only two. Yeah, this does not sound good in any way, shape, or form, not the least of which is having a wheelchair cat in your bathroom, which is not exactly some kind of palatial estate in there. Well, it's the biggest bathroom in the house. I know, but you got to use it. I know, but she needs to be in an enclosed place. If I had my eyeballs removed, if my legs gave out, and I had to live in a house where every other pet was out to get me, they'd have to put me in a freaking enclosed place. No, I'll put you in my bathroom. I'll stick you right in the tub. <laughs> that's right. That's where I belong. Yeah, like that song, Jennifer Warren's, right in the tub where we belong. Yep. <laughs> With the cat. With the, the cat is in the tub? No, she's not in my tub. No, but she likes it when I take a shower. She, like, lays right next to it inhales the steam i guess or something i don't probably know. smells better that stinking cat litter yeah like like i said this cat is this cat has been special since the day we got her now she's even more special and there is no stinking cat litter i clean it <laughs> every hour i go in and see because she doesn't eat she's not eating right now either maybe so, she's trying to tell you something i'm hand feeding her baby food did she leave did she leave like a, a, a... Oh, assisted well. <laughs> suicide document did she leave any kind of medical directive this cat no she says keep me alive unless i'm in pain and she purrs and this is a cat that anytime i picked her up she literally bit me and now she likes me well hell so, yeah because if it's not for you damn move. yeah she's dependent on me <laughs> I hear so this she's happens. smart enough to figure that out. I hear this happens up. with some old people, too, although none of the old people I've ever known. They never get. Right. I, I don't I know. I was just going to ask, does that work for you? I wish. I wish. I don't get any nicer the older I get. I do, because I forget sometimes that I'm supposed to be mean. Well, you're nicer <laughs> than me to begin with, but we've known that True. for a really long time. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's a good one. 
I sucked all the nice out of you when we met. Yeah. Years yeah. Ago. You got all my quotient of nice. That was it. That was yeah. Nice to you, and then I quit. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 